the Russian government reportedly requested that the FBI review Tamerlane Tsarnaev's link to Chechen terror groups in 2011. In January 2012, he traveled to Russia and spent many months there. What are the roots of terror in that part of the world? Editorial board member Matthew Kaminsky joins me now. Matt, uh, just to be clear from the top, we don't know mm. where Tamerlane picked up these jihadist tendencies, if it was here at home or uh, in Chechnya, but let's suppose it was in Chechnya. Um, when I think of that part of the world, I think of nationalists fighting Russia, not Islamic jihad. Um, how did jihad take root there? Well, you know, it's always been, um, Chechnya and North Caucasus, they adopted uh, Islam or Sunni Islam uh, from the Ottomans between the 16th and 19th century. They've been fighting the Russians for the last 200 years. There's always been a series of rebellions, Tolstoy even wrote about them. But more recently, when the Soviet Union collapsed, these sort of tensions that were sort of built in between the Orthodox Christian Russians and these sort of tribes, Muslim tribes, blew out in the kind of chaos after 1991. And then you always had, Islam was always part of the difference, what made them different from the Russians. But generally, in the Caucasus and Central Asia, you have a more moderate form of Islam. The Mus Muslims there tend to sort of drink fairly openly. And in those early years, it was more a mafia state uh, led by a nationalist uh, Soviet army officer named uh, Jokhar Dud um, um, Jokhar Dudayev, uh, but then during, after the first war in 94 is when it started to Islamicize and you had some radicals come in and it became a more radical kind of place. Well, the, the radicals seem to thrive in places that are in chaos. What role did Putin's war on Chechnya play in allowing these jihadists right. to really have an influence in Chechnya? Remember, there, there, were, there were two wars. There was a 94 and 96 war. These were incredibly brutal wars. The capital, Grozny, was completely leveled to the ground. Probably a fifth of all Chechens were either killed or forced to leave Chechnya in the latest uh, forced exile, because uh, there were several before, including one by Stalin. That was also equally brutal. Um, in that period, after the Russians decimated the um, the, the more nationalist uh, rebel force, D Dudayev was killed in a in a in a Russian military strike in the I think in '96. Uh, the more radical sort of Islamist influence elements came out. There was a second war in '99 that was started by Putin at the start of his presidency. It was really used to establish him as as the Russian leader. So he goes and he just wipes out. And he Rosny. wipes it out. Uh, I mean, this is it was already wiped out, but then he sort of actually wins the war. If y Yeltsin failed to win the war. There's a humiliation. Putin goes in, wins the war. The war ends pretty much in sort of 2000. And this, um, what's left of the Chechen resistance goes underground. And underground, it tends to become more, more radical. Uh, the latest leader is a guy named Doku Umarov, who was born in the 60s. Uh, about five years ago, he declared a Caucasus emirate, trying to unite all these different Muslim groups, including in Dagestan, where uh, Tamerlan Tsarnaev actually went, at least as far as we know, and spent most of his time and where his family lives. And are there Al-Qaeda links there, or are, are these different groups, sort of offshoot groups? There are certainly Al-Qaeda links. You have Chechens have turned up in Afghanistan and in Iraq. Uh, Al-Qaeda has formally recognized the, uh, the Islamists in the Caucasus as an Al-Qaeda offshoot. But, you know, in the last 10 years, there's been the Russians are not, uh, there's, there's not an active chapter of the ACLU in Russia right now. They've really, I mean, Putin's been brutal in, in, uh, in, 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 in cracking down on anything that resembles uh, either Islamists or, or breakaway. There's a strong man leader in Chechnya now uh, named Ramzan Kadyrov, uh, who's actually on a U.S. blacklist uh, for all his human rights violations. So it's really been a place people haven't worried about because they assume the Russians have a very tight grip on it. And it's actually the interesting question about Tamerlan Tsarnaev, if he in fact made contact with extremist groups there, and he was already on the Russian radar screen, it would sort of seem logical in a sense that the Russians would have known about it, because they do have a fairly good, you know, there's not a lot of competence in the Russian government, but the one thing they do well is still <laughs> the, the, the FSB slash K KGB. Yeah, well, we should make clear that we don't know yet what the links were between Tamerlan and, and these, these groups in Chechnya, although I guess authorities are looking into that. But didn't one of the terror groups deny responsibility for this? No, I think that's actually very telling because they, they came out with a statement over the weekend. It Who's was, they? It was the Mujahideen of the Emirate of the Caucasus, which is this, um, you know, and they're not very active these days. They, they, they did sort of pull off a terrorist strike um, to 
recently in, in, two, in 2010 in Moscow against the metro, then in 2011 against an airport near Moscow. But you know, they're not really, they, they don't control any territory. There's no open sort of terrorist camps there. But anyway, they put out a statement saying, look, our enemy is not the United States of America. We are fighting Russians. <laughs> we're happy to sort of terrorize the Russians, but we don't really have a gripe with the U.S. Okay, well, it's a story we're clearly going to follow very closely. Editorial board member Matthew sure. Kaminsky, thanks for being with us.